All right, let's go. And you can hear me, huh? I can hear you in my ear. And this is episode 28, Trisha's Shop Talk, and today we have Robert Mungle. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you made it. You made it. There was a uh, definitely a uh, reach out to you, which took a minute, and yeah. it finally happened. I'm a busy man. So uh, I'm glad that it's definitely going down. Well, good to be here. Thanks for having me. And then uh, you here actually you met Ahmad earlier. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So, uh, nah, but whole story goes back, and then I guess I can go back definitely to the story, and the whole story is 2000 and... I don't know, I would say just the early 2000. Last stop off of West Gray. Mm-hmm. The classic club. You were killing it. Yeah. It um, was fun times back then. The reason that I brought, the reason that, and I swear, it stuck to me to this day. And, you know, it's almost like, to me, like, meeting, <laughs> uh, uh, you know. But, yeah, definitely for coming. Thank you for coming. But I guess what Thank I you. was getting at was uh, I bombed. Obviously, <laughs> didn't get no laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> right. Didn't get any laughs at all. I walked off, uh, tail behind, you know, tail between my legs. Mm-hmm. And then I think I, I, I don't know what specifically I asked you, but, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's recording. Sorry. No, you're good. No, yeah. no I just double, double checking. Uh, so then uh, I happened to say, you know, after you turn to you and say, hey, any mm-hmm. advice? And I think that was, was the, the angle of the, of the question. It was like, hey, yeah. what's the advice for next time? And then it was, it was it was like, hey kid, you're not uh, you're not as ugly as I am, so you have nothing to worry about. <laughs> yeah. That's fair, still true. Yeah. No, but but earlier yeah. you were killing it. Earlier you were killing yeah. it. Um, and there then, was a time. Yeah. yeah. No, no, but no. <laughs> <laughs> but but the reason I remember um, it was this. She has a day show, and I don't really say nothing bad. Uh, she had a day show at the time, and then she would go to wet. She, I, I would go there, and then uh-huh. I know she would go there, just like most uh, most people in ABC or Channel Thirteen, anyways, doing morning shows. Yeah, they, I know they would go there to last stop and just work out and work on mm-hmm. their, you know, their their stage presence. And uh, that that's one thing that stood out to me. And then the other thing was that she she has a show now still. I, I know who you're this. Okay, but you went up there. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I didn't want to go off of what yeah. you said, but it was you had the whole. Uh, crowd laughing because it was it was one of those busy nights, um, and then I, I don't know. But back in the day, I forgot. Was it like a specific night, Monday or Tuesday? Monday night was the night they did open mic. Okay, the stop. And it, at for a time, it was the best open mic in the country, bar yeah. none. Bar none. Uh, <coughs> when the laugh stop had headliners come in, they would sometimes come in a, a few days early just to go to the open mic, right? Because it was so well received. The crowds were great. Uh, like Lewis Black from uh-huh. Daily Show. Wow. He came in early. He stayed, came in early and stayed a day later hmm. just to go to the two Monday open mics. Hmm. And, uh, and he said these were, that open mic was better than anything in New York or L.A., bar none. And the talent that came out of there was amazing. And it was top shelf. I'm, I, and then me, I'm, I'm 43 now, obviously. Um, but when I was young, I would watch HBO, see Sam mm-hmm. Kennison, Ronnie yeah. Dangerfield. Um, and then I remember how I knew about this, but I knew Rodney had some home with Laugh Stop. Yeah. And then I believe Sam Kennison had been in there Kennison a few times. Recorded, Kennison recorded his album Live From Hell there. Wow. Uh, and I think that was the last one he did before he died. But uh, he recorded there. Uh, Rogan recorded there. Uh, man, number of them. Dozens of guys. and Because the room was set up to record live albums. Right. They put mics in the ceiling so they can get the crowd ambiance louder. Right. And it was just a great room. The room altogether was great. This doesn't go back to Bill Hicks, does it? Is uh, Bill Hicks there? No. Bill Hicks was there. Yeah, okay, Bill Hicks good. was okay. there. Okay. Uh, Hicks was there. Uh, Hicks was had left Houston by then, mm-hmm. but he was there probably in 90, 89, 90. Okay. And then, but the last stop open mic really kicked off around 94, 95. Okay. And it ran for 10 years. And it was best in the country. Mm-hmm. Easy. And there was probably... 40 comics a night mm. going up, doing six minutes. And the crowds were always, they did, they had two rooms at the old laugh stop. They had the showroom, the, the big showroom. And in the front, they had the small room mm-hmm. where the bar was. And they would do open mic in the small room. Uh, but it was packed. And it sat 30 people max, I guess, mm-hmm. maybe. And it was packed every Monday. And it was packed all night. It would start at eight, 
end at two, and the crowd would be there the whole night. On a Monday night. On a Monday night. It was yeah. nuts. And But they had a thing where it was like cheap drinks. You could get a uh, a beer for a buck. Wow. Yeah. You know, a mixed drink for like two bucks. Yeah. And so every cheap reprobate would come out there and spend exactly. six bucks and get hammered. And so, but the talent that came out of there, I mean, it was great. I mean, there's headliners that burned out of that scene. It yeah. was amazing. You got yeah. some other names? Uh. Yeah, well, the guys I worked with coming out, I mean, Ralphie May was there. Ralphie. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. yeah, Ralphie, yeah. yeah. He was eating up the stage. No wow. one attended. Yeah, yeah. Uh, was he from Dallas or? Uh, he was Arkansas. from Arkansas. Arkansas, yeah. okay, okay. And he got his chops at some other club, but he would be there. Mike McRae, who's a touring headliner, Tommy Drake, touring headliner. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Sean Rouse mm-hmm. got his start there. Um, dozens of guys that okay. all went off. And some are still doing it. Some are out of the game, but right. there's a lot still doing it. Yeah. And I mean, it was, but going on that night, you would have 15 guys out of the 30 or so that were headliner comics just going out there working out shit. I guess we can say shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah like, you could fucking A. Yeah, and, so, fucking a. Exactly. <laughs> and so it was great. And it was a great time for, that's where Thanks comics much. met. Uh, you met other comics, you got work because you make the guys and they'd say, hey, come with me to Tulsa or wherever. And so it was a great way. It was like a little clubhouse on Mondays, mm-hmm. and just amazing. No, yeah. because I mean, um, I I know you had did a special. I look back in your Instagram, and mm-hmm. you did a special. I don't know, but a couple years back, right? About, uh, about laptop. About s- s- oh, uh, well, we did. Uh, s- somebody interviewed me for it. I yeah. can't remember, but yeah. But one of the things that was so great was there was sort of a hierarchy, mm-hmm. and no, you knew where you fit in mm-hmm. with some of the older comics. And they didn't take any shit from new guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, there was some old... The club that was before there was called the, the Comedy Workshop mm-hmm. and the Comedy Addicts. That was the first club in Houston. Mm-hmm. And that closed down, and then the Laugh Stop kind of became the number one club. But all the old Annex guys would be there on Mondays, mm-hmm. and everybody looked up to them. Those were, the, those were the cats, right? Those were the guys who were out there doing it, and you wanted to get in with them. And they would be, they had the front showroom, like I said, where the, and then the, the main showroom would be closed off, but that's where comics would hang out mm-hmm. while the show in the front's going on. And the comics that would be in the big room were all the old Annex guys. And if you went back there, like when I first started out, I would just, hey, what's going on? And they're like, no, you can't, no, get the <laughs> fuck out. Mm-hmm. Go, go get me a beer. Mm-hmm. You know, go do something. You can't be back here with us. We're the royalty. Right. And once you got in there, once they let you in, you know, that was kind of a sign that, okay, maybe I'm doing something right. Right. I mean, the first time wow. I was there, there was a guy named Riley Barber, who was a great comic and moved out to L.A. And I haven't talked to him forever, but he, he came, I came back there and he goes, uh, tell me seven reasons why Lucille Ball's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I, I, I don't know. No. Go figure out seven ways she's not funny because I hate that bitch. <laughs> and I went, then you could come back here. And so, yeah, that was that kind of thing. You know, they ran you through your paces and they kind of. Yeah, work you on your sets. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And they you. would tell you what wouldn't work and they'd tell you, no, that was garbage, whatever. Mm-hmm. But once you got in there and got to hang in the back, that was kind of the, okay, now I'm in. Now I'm cool. Yeah. You know. See, they I don't never... have that anymore. No, <laughs> no. Well, I mean, like, from my remembering of, of being there was. I didn't. I mean, like the only material I did have was still the same material as my dad. Yeah. And and yeah. Now I even have X amount of material now. Like right. you know. Um. But it, at the time, it was it was trying to deliver. And like I said, the only thing I can say after these last twenty something years is is definitely I feel comfortable going up going going up there and saying things. This is my only problem now is that I talk a little bit over the top. So mm-hmm. now it's kind of like I'm, and see, this is just me self learning myself. Sure. Um, yet again, from being overseas, seeing all the things, and then yeah. working in the ER, an emergency room in Houston, Texas, and and seeing sure. people in their lows and very lows, and vice versa. But life experience. So now mm-hmm. having that life experience, now that I that I go up there just finding time to do it but then also but but it's right. just but, but like i said my my angle before was almost i look back being that young i'm like why the hell was i even doing that <laughs> but i did it it's fun yeah but yeah. but i mean like i said like when i would hear you guys go up there and gals you know 
I mean, man, it was just like like raunchy back and forth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like no yeah. hold bars. Yeah, and then, yeah. then I was young and just like witnessing like, like wow. Like he just made fun of a girl that's on <laughs> Channel Eleven and right. talked about yeah. some raunchy, shit. Right. <laughs> and she was cool about it. You know, yeah. I was I was like really. There was like, a lot of guys, <laughs> and this is all the. And it's different now. It's a whole different media game. But morning show DJs are the worst fucking things on the planet. Uh, they're the, just the, most, they're yeah. the least funniest human beings. Yeah, and yeah. they think they are because they're in a room with them and their buddy and the news girl. And the traffic guy or whatever, right. and they say a joke regardless of how fun, and they everybody laughs, right? You know, and they don't realize people listening think this is bullshit, right? And so, I would be, and we would all be amazed. There was one guy in particular, I won't say his name, he's still on the yeah, but fuck him. And okay. so he would come out there, and he would stink up the joint every Monday night, and just the worst. I mean, one time he came out with a. Uh, a toilet seat around his neck, uh. and he called it some kind of award. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> it was just fucking horseshit. And so, those guys who do that, that, and so when you see the news people and the people who are in media right. or whatever, they come out there. Oh, look at me! I'm kind of dipping my toe in this. No, you suck. Get, you're not a real player. Right. Get out. And that's what we all. Everybody hated that. We, yeah. you know, we we wanted to hang out with guys who were really players who really want to do it, really want to learn right. the craft and and. That kind of the tourist bullshit. Look at me. I'm an, and you're making money as a radio dick. Right, yeah. Right, so right. go do that yeah. and stay out of our pool. All right. right. This is Adult <laughs> Swim. You know, this is the grown ups are here. Go do the weather and yeah. your fake fucking phone calls or whatever. Yeah. 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 That's what I love the, when you hear like the birthday scam or uh-huh. whatever. I tell you, but you know, those are fake, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, oh, it's yeah. illegal to do that. It's illegal. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Actually, I didn't and, know that. Yeah. It's yeah, illegal. I, I and and that. people go, no, it's not. It's like, yeah, it is. I've yeah. done three. Right. <laughs> it's fake. Right. And it's illegal. Yeah. You can't record somebody, yeah. even if after the fact. But yeah. And it's like, just go do that and stay out. And you don't see them as much anymore. Yeah. yeah. No, but mostly because yeah. radio's dead. Yeah, it is. You know? Yeah. yeah, I mean, this is taking over. This is yeah. uh, completely taking over, especially mm-hmm. since you have Wi-Fi in your car now. Yeah, and, and, and all those kind of things. They tried it with satellite radio, mm-hmm. but uh, nobody. AM AM stands for all moron. All that, moron. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. the only people who listen. There's nothing on. A, why do they still have AM radio? Well, uh, you or, know, you still have people who get all of their political opinions yeah. from there. Yeah, so I guess you still have that. You know, <laughs> and then when uh, Art Bell died, you know, yeah. like what's the point yeah. of AM radio anymore? I want to hear right. about aliens and uh, that was fun. We would listen to him on the road. <laughs> yeah, we listen to reptiles love. and all. Yeah, <laughs> or Art uh, Bell, coast to coast. coast yeah, to coast. Oh. Yeah. The they, aliens have appeared. <laughs> over. Oh fuck! But they stuff. had like it had like an eerie feel to it too. Yeah. though. it was just like like it plus yeah, it's like, three in the morning. Yeah, 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 yeah it's, it's three in the morning. You're like, high or yeah, drunk. You're high or drunk, or you're just working night shift trying to stay up. And yeah. then it would be like the most out of whack shit because sometimes you get lucky and you just turn it on and yeah. he might be the most like some weird guy that he's talking to yeah. about knowing about yeah. aliens. And he or... took them all seriously. Yeah. yeah. Everybody's thing, without like, any everybody. questions. <laughs> We're not going to clear any. We're just, no questions. <laughs> and he yes. sounded so educated yes. and erudite. Like, yeah. Yes. Oh. <laughs> well, tell us more about the <laughs> there was a, there, we, I was on the road with two friends of mine. We had done a gig somewhere, Oklahoma or whatever, coming back. And there's a we found a Christian radio station, uh-huh. and you know it's the usual bullshit, and <laughs> and they took calls. Mm-hmm. They're like the whole thing was say you're down on your your life's not going great. What do you do to pick yourself up? <laughs> so I go, dude, give me the fucking phone. <laughs> so I, and they put me right on mm-hmm. no, with no who are you, whatever, just. This, oh, hey, we got a caller, Rob. Yeah, they can't afford a screen. Yeah, they can't afford it. There's probably only three people listening. Yeah, listening so, oh, somebody's calling. All right, great. Well, please put them on. <coughs> and so this dumb bitch puts me on. And she goes, so what do you do to get through your life? Like, well, you know, it may not be the most Christian, but I've, I've taken to Oriental Massage. Okay. I find it to be very relaxing. Yeah. And I go on, and she's going, oh, that's like yoga. Yeah. And I go, after about five minutes, go, no, no, uh, like those places down by the airport with yeah. no windows. <laughs> that's where I go. Yeah. And uh, they, uh, they jerk me off for 50 bucks. <laughs> oh, I think somebody's messing with us. Yeah, yeah. Like, don't know, man. These are the people who are up yeah. at 2.30 in the morning. Yeah. But see, I believe oh, this is like six in the afternoon. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, <laughs> this, this is a, drive time. This is drive time <laughs> on some stupid Christian station <laughs> that nobody's listening to. Right. They have one advertiser, you know, and I'm out there talking about getting jerked off. Yeah, 
But but I think that's that's still I think, the most entertaining thing yeah. that happened on this show all year. Oh yeah, they played at the Christmas party. I betcha. <laughs> but but you know how like some people are like you know uh, when you're a cop you're always a cop or sometimes mm-hmm. you're a you're a police officer you're always you know or you know yeah. like you know I feel it's the same way with comedians like comedians is the same shit like sure. you, like the way your mind works. You, per, you you see it just laid out like on a fucking yeah. silver platter. Like, yo, well, are they even checking anybody? And you're like, no. Yeah. Like, fucking I haven't call been them on up. stage in three years. I don't know shit. Yeah, I've been out of the game for three years. Mm-hmm. I retired. But I still see stuff. And, oh, you know, I could have worked that this way. You know, and you figure out. So the, your mind still works. Yeah, it like still that. plays that. You're still trying to find a bit and everything. Yeah. Every time, like, oh, you know, and, I, and when I see somebody do something, and a, they, for my opinion, they do it wrong. And I'm like, no, man, you missed it. You missed it. It was right there. And you, fucking, oh man, give me that. I could have, I could have run with that. But yeah, it still works that way. Yeah. But see, I, I like, I don't know. Like on my end, it's just I, I, I even worked it into one of my jokes was saying that, uh, you know, the reason I am funny is because I, I was, I went through trauma when I was younger. You know. Sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. But then again, That's like how anybody. Gets but then it. again, it's just flipping shit around. You know, it's uh-huh. just like you see like something, and you're just like. Even though like like this is suck scene watching somebody just whatever, but mm-hmm. there's something still funny and and I mean not not to say watching somebody down and out, but in general, just make trying to make fun out of life. I guess yeah, you try yeah. to make the find the humor and everything. You know? Right, that's the old saying that uh, tragedy plus time equals comedy. Right, you know, is it just seeing the absurdity in things? Is it kind of like uh, that? For me, it's not? it's I like this. I don't know, like. I never did stuff that was pop culture, really. Okay. Or, you know, I never did, oh, look at the Kardashians, what, none right. of that shit. But I would always try to find stuff that wasn't touched or something that was different from what other people were doing. Try to find things that happened in your life or whatever, but put a spin on it that wasn't the traditional way. Um, it's hard to explain. But well, well, I mean, you had one on um, Facebook, which is pretty funny, you know, <laughs> gathering uh, Mattress Mac. Yeah, and then mm-hmm. like he, you know, I mean, you say, I mean, I don't know, it was the one where he's like sitting on, like I guess, oh, yeah, like for like, Astros, he was coming out again with his fucking shit, and then he had him sitting on some throne, and he's like, yeah, he's getting feeded, but <laughs> models are feeding him grapes. <laughs> yeah, he's like a Caesar because he's he's hawking for Caesar's palace because uh, okay. they're the only people that took his action. <laughs> right, right, so right. He's, he's up there with his stupid fucking these two models. Yeah. But see, I didn't know all that. He knew all yeah. that, and then he threw a word on it, and then I don't know what. Yeah, but yeah, he's up there with his eighty-four-year-old bare feet. I'm like, yeah. dude, what the fuck? He <laughs> used to deal cocaine. All right, yeah, go fuck exactly. yourself, Mac. Yeah. First of all, first of all, he used to deal cocaine. That's yeah. how you got your yeah. your yeah. fucking yeah, place. Know. Yeah, and. Yeah, yeah, that's what kills me. He's the most successful drug dealer yeah, in know, the history of drug dealers. <laughs> He's the drug dealer's dream. Yeah, he got out of the game. Is. He made his money, got out of the game. Clean. Clean. Him uh, and, and Tim Allen. Him and Tim Allen. <laughs> Two yeah. white guys. But Tim Allen did some time, though, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, Tim oh, yeah. Allen did time. Tim Allen actually yeah. did time. Yeah. Two white guys made it yeah, out of yeah, the drug yeah. game. Yeah. Go figure. America. Go figure, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, but it was just like looking at it, and then, you know, you obviously you see Mattress Mag. He's in his mm-hmm. possibly 80s. Yeah, oh, he's yeah, in he's his eighties. Yeah, and then I was in, you know, Rob Robert just said uh, time for an intervention. You know, I yeah, no, I started no. loud. I That's what I hate about Texas. <laughs> Texas, the only way you can gamble on sports is if you buy a fucking mattress from that guy. <laughs> exactly. Maybe I just want to lay a bet. Maybe I just <laughs> you know? want to put some why I gotta go to your store <laughs> and buy a piece of shit mattress yeah, exactly. to gamble. Uh, exactly. Mac. Just to gamble. Uh, I'm really, degenerate. He's, and he's way. against gambling. That's what kills. He, the the state legislature is trying to get some gamble. He's like, no, we don't need that. You asshole! You're the only one You're the who gets only to gamble. One who gets action? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got I got the app, the Caesar's Palace app. Mm-hmm. When I was in Ohio, they're a more progressive state. They allow you to gamble on sports, like right. a common man. Yes. And but as soon as you get to Texas, it goes blank. It doesn't work. Exactly. You know, like even FanDuel and things yeah. like that. You try, and they're like, doesn't "Hey, work. you're somewhere where this doesn't but, work." I'm like, I thought that was the point of the fucking internet, right? And so, but unless I drive across Louisiana, right, a mile inside Louisiana, boom, it's back. It's Every back time to I drive, hey, you want to play? Come <laughs> yeah. on, Rob, yeah. welcome back. That's that's it's it's, it's it's kind of frightening that they yeah. actually well, know, can pinpoint exactly where. They okay, know where you you're can at. gamble now. Yeah, yeah, and we willingly do it. Yeah. Does Price Picks have that shit now? No. Who? I don't prize picks. Prize picks, I think, would be the None latest. None of the gambling one. sites work in Texas. No, I know that when oh, I okay. try, yeah, it's, especially since they've gone like legal now. Yeah. Like back when you had the offshore stuff, like you would be gambling yeah. in the Cayman Islands and all that yeah. type of stuff. It yeah. worked when it was illegal. Yeah. But then it was hard to get your money. 
Yeah, um, that was the only reason Bitcoin took off, right? Because the only <laughs> Bitcoin, the only thing it provided was a way to gamble. Was a way yeah. to gamble. That was it. Yeah, that's exactly. the whole. That's why Bitcoin. There's no other use for it than gambling. Well, then exactly black, right. black in the black market, right? Yeah, and like, buying yeah, drugs yeah, in yeah. Singapore. Yeah, yeah. and children. <laughs> yeah, you want to buy a twelve-year-old <laughs> in Malaysia? <laughs> that's good. That's yeah, a, yeah, but yeah. you want to buy? Nobody would know. Yeah, you need nobody a pizza. Would know. Fuck off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work. Crypto only here. Yeah, <laughs> get the worse, hell out of here. It's worse than a peso. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it really is. Well, see, when I was in the Navy, like, like they always told us, they go, "All right, when y'all go out to Bahrain, stay away from the black flags." Dude, I, that always just freaked me the out. Black flags. Black flags, meaning westerns are oh. just and it, but it was just very like just obviously. I mean, just like okay, it's like yeah. if I see a black flag, just stay the avoid. fuck out of there. Yeah, boy. Now it's here. If you <laughs> I see a rainbow flag, don't go because there's not gonna be any pussy in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's Unless you want your dick sucked, but then go. But I think yeah, now it's, But I mean, now it's even more good. I mean, now it's just everything's just out there now. Yeah. Now it's just no. I mean, I mean, I I think I could say that but now. I mean, forty three now. I mean, like twenty. Mm. I mean, definitely back from the last stop times is totally yeah. different. I think different subjects, different everything to be talking about. I got about in now. trouble on 9 11. Mm. No, two days after. Mm-hmm. They closed down for a mm-hmm. couple of days. And they did a show, just local guys. And mm-hmm. they said, Mark Babbitt at the time was the runner. Guy who ran the place. Fuck him. Anyway, uh, yeah. he goes, All right, look, guys, we're back. It's two days. It's a Sunday night after the 9 11. It's on a Tuesday. They're doing the show on Sunday night. All yeah. the weekend, they're shut down. No 9-11 jokes, Rob. Tells everybody else, <laughs> no 9-11. Don't How do 9-11. Whatever you do, don't. I'm more yeah. like, we just like, don't you got to say that something. Because yeah. I had written five minutes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And my whole thing was, and this is back, I'm as liberal as they get. Uh, but this is the time when everybody was like, George Bush, go kill people. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Uh. Doesn't matter what side of the aisle you're on, George Bush, go kill people. And so I did a whole... Like my five minutes, <laughs> said, I, it, the name of the bit was the cock of Christ. All right, <laughs> okay. and that's what I, I assumed George Bush would name nuclear missiles. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and he'd go, "Hey over there, how you doing over there in Saudi Arabia, right? <laughs> Afghanistan? How y'all doing this here? I'm gonna show you this right here is called the cock of Christ, and it will go from fucking Six Flags, <laughs> New Mexico, all the way over there to Baghdad in about eight and a half fucking minutes. It's yeah. great." Yeah. And it will fill your ass with glorious American sunshine for six to eight weird. I don't know what the half life is of the one true God. And so I did all this shit about the cock of Christ. Mm-hmm. And so I get off stage and Pab goes, You're banned. You're banned. You're oh, banned. Man. And I'm like, Okay, how long am I banned? No, you're banned for two months. Can't come back on stage. And luckily, all the comics were there and like, No, fuck him. That was funny. Yeah. You know, that was good stuff. <laughs> and everybody got a laugh. Everybody blew off some steam. Yeah. And so, yeah. But but I don't know. I mean, I mean if Toby Keith had to come in there. They would have yeah. let him perform, right? Right? Toby Keith. Sure, they would have put out the red carpet. Yeah, that's all he was doing after. Yeah, that. yeah, he got right. rich after nine eleven. Yep. But see, that's what that's what I don't understand nowadays. Nowadays, it's made like, more money off nine eleven than Halliburton. Than Halliburton, <laughs> <laughs> he really did. It's Halliburton and Toby Keith. Toby Keith. They made the money. That's who profited. Yeah. Off that. Follow the money. Follow the money. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's like like I guess different subjects were different eras. I guess or just. Sure. Oh, I yeah. mean, I mean, but. But I think that's what it's about. Like I think that's that's what it's, it's about making. Yeah. Just like well, like well, some well, people are just so ridiculous. Yeah. And, well, yeah. you know what? Because um, every now and again, because I'm a comedy fan. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, yeah, I'll call myself a fan, but a supporter of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have thought about uh, doing things because, like everybody, you know, you you make everybody laugh in the break room. You think sure. you can do it? That's the problem with it. Well, not the problem. I mean, I guess well, that's, that's where great. everyone starts. That's yeah, where yeah. everyone starts. So everyone yeah. thinks, yeah, you know, Mike, he's funny at work. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he might try to go up on stage and then he, you know, yeah. he eats his balls. Yep. Um, because it's uh, it's more of an art. Well, I mean. Uh, it's a different game. Yeah. And I don't want to even sound so pretentious in saying that. But, like, the thing is, the, the thing I do is I look at it and I know how, yeah, you can make funny quips to people and all kinds of stuff and notice things, but actually putting together material mm-hmm. and, 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 and being up there. And then, like he said, it's a, it's a part of the time. I'm rambling, but I'm going back to what you said about different subjects in different times. Now, if you go back and you, like, there's certain stuff that still does hold up. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Slapstick's oh. going to always, like, the Three Stooges are still, they're mm-hmm. going to be funny a thousand years from now, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'll go back and like look at a Lenny Bruce set or something like yeah. that. 
And there's some cringy stuff. Yeah. You go back because it's a it different time. It doesn't really hold up. I mean, he he didn't drop the N word. Right. But he called black people Negroes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, right. and colored people. Mm -hmm. And so, and he was as liberal and progressive as you get. As progressive the, as you get then. At the time. Because I yeah. played some of it for uh, one thing that did kind of hold up. Mm -hmm. And I played it for, remember, I played it for Gamal. I played it for some of my, my fellow black friends. Mm hmm. And they couldn't get past. He had he had a bit about taking your colored friends to a yeah, party. Yeah, <laughs> and he used. But in that and time, he, that was the language of the time. Like, bro, it was 1962. Like, yeah, just just listen to it. Just yeah. just insert African American in there if that helps. Yeah, but it's but it's true. That still held up. Yeah, because I've been that colored guy at a party. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I, I used to actually do a bit about that, uh, okay. about the different times. Uh -huh. I used to do a progressive man in the Civil War. Yes. <laughs> this, 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 I'm a progressive man. I really, you know, I, I think of the Negro as a, as a, as a person that should be respected. I'm really more of a four-fifths man myself. Yeah, four-fifths man myself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and so I'll, using the language oh, of the time, even though exactly. it's... Exactly. Yeah. 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 I'm a four-fifths yeah, four man. Mm -hmm. I mean, we teach, uh, you know, we teach Christianity to our, to our slaves. They can understand it. It's not like the Indian. They don't understand understand a loving God. They pray to the wind. <laughs> they pray to the wind. Exactly. I'm a progressive man, you see. Progressive man, exactly. Yeah. No, seriously. No, ridiculous. but I mean, it just hits it right on the money, though. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm yeah. saying. No, it, it just, does. Yeah. It just sugarcoats everything. It's like, mm -hmm. like, like the obvious, but on another level. I yeah. Mean, I think oh, I used to like, get silenced to that all the time. <laughs> yeah. I would have people like, and they look to the one black guy in the crowd. Is it okay? <laughs> yeah, and he's okay. laughing. Yeah. That's the thing. He's yeah. laughing because right. he knows how true that is. Yeah. <laughs> and but yeah, that's the thing that it's the times change, but the comedy stays the same. You right, know, things right. are funny or funny. And that's why I don't give. I don't buy into all this cancel culture bullshit. Mm -hmm. Like, there's ways to like you can't talk about this. Can't talk, well, you just can't be a cunt about it. Yes. You know, if you're if you're smart and you're inventive and you're clever, right? You can talk about anything. Yeah, as long as it's not mean spirit. And yeah, and if it comes from a place of respect or <laughs> yes. of a place of understanding exactly. or trying to understand, or trying to understand. you know. Yeah. There's plenty of stuff. I mean, I had a friend who was a, a trans woman, and she goes, you can't talk about trans people. can't talk about trans people. That's just what I was about to say. And I said, yes, you can. You can talk about it. And she goes, no, it's not. I was like, no, you just have to find a way to do it. Mm -hmm. And with the parameters of which I said, I said, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to do a joke, and you be in the audience, and if it's not good, I will never do it again, and I'll apologize publicly for doing it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she goes, okay, fine. And the joke was... <clears throat> I'm probably gonna can't. I'm, I quit anyway. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and so the joke was: there was a band in Houston that played a festival, mm -hmm. and they were not on the main stage, and they took offense that it was because it was a trans woman guitar player mm -hmm. and a trans man singer, okay. mm -hmm. and they thought that was the reason. Right. And no, it wasn't the reason. It's because they sucked. <laughs> right. And I made them point out this point. It's like I went back and looked and listened to their album. And here's what I thought about it. She's a guitarist. All right. Well, this is what I thought about it. She played her guitar like if she was playing it with her dick. <laughs> <laughs> it was awful. Right. And that was the joke. Uh -huh. And I get off stage, she goes, okay, that's fine. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I got the pronouns right. Right. You got she the played it like she it sounded like, like she played it with his dick. Or her dick. Her, <laughs> her dick. Yeah. That's what the whole, yeah. And so uh, she's like, well, okay, I guess. But she do it. their dick. Yeah. Their dick. <laughs> them, them their dick. Them their yeah. dick. <laughs> but yeah, like I say, you can do anything. You can do stuff as long as you, and I the people, all the people that bitch about it are generally not funny to start with, right? And they're just trying to do jokes about race or whatever. And, well, you can't you can't call people you know, gay people the f word. Shut up. Yeah, fuck off. Isn't it amazing how humorless some people are? Like when you actually yeah. talk to them, yeah. and it's like this person. Okay, like what do you do every day? <laughs> yeah, like you have no. So who who is your favorite? Who makes you laugh? And you're, mm -hmm. and they can't. I mean, they won't I answer. Guess, they, they, they can't answer. Yeah, 
You know, I, I guess those are the people that that's why like uh, Big Bang Theory was the yeah biggest Oof. thing for twenty years. Yeah, yeah. You know, shows like that. Like I, I would watch. I'm like, who's watching this? There's a great YouTube video. You can watch Big Bang Theory without the laugh track, uh-huh. and it's hysterical. Yeah, <laughs> really. It's so off putting. It's just so crazy because they're just sitting eating, and somebody will say, "Oh, well, they're, they're like, and mm-hmm. people just sit there for a second. Mm-hmm. Okay, now start talking. Yeah, <laughs> it's very weird, and no one wants to admit that they're just laughing yeah. at the Indian guy's accent. Yeah, <laughs> that's all. That's what they're really laughing at. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and an autistic guy. You're laughing at an autistic yeah. guy and an mm-hmm. Indian guy's accent. The autistic that's guy is the 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 guy that's from Houston. Yeah, from Houston. Yeah. I forget his name. Did you ever? Did you? you ever, I know he came. I don't know if he did. No, he was an know. actor. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 I know yeah, that's he, a whole. He probably other. was in the theater and. Yeah, I think you know. he went to HSPVA. Somewhere. Yeah, he did. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He's Speak- got that kind of story. Speaking of, did you ever know Whittles? Henry Who? Whittles? Henry Whittles? No. Oh, Harris Whittles. Harris, I'm sorry. Yeah, How, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah. sorry. Yeah, Harris. Yeah, he was, uh, he was around. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. He was very yeah. funny. Um, So that, the weird thing on that is that I, 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 I think I had, well, I mean, he was way after me, but I went to Johnston. So mm. to start off, I went to Parker Elementary and then uh, went there, uh, same same second grade class as Beyonce. Hey-oh. Oh. Hey-oh. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Um, and then... And uh, the other two that nobody remembers. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, and that's really originally, like, all there was a bunch of girls in that school. Yeah. And then, yeah, they're all, like, they were all originally original. When there are, like, six people in Destiny's Child. Yeah, was, yeah, but, yeah. But then, I mean, we can go back. This is, like, Star Search type of shit oh, time. Geez, Remember that yeah. shit? Like, yeah. That's, like, Ed oh, McMahon God. type of shit. Yeah, so. yeah, when they were going around doing the talent shows and all yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. So um, left there, went to Johnson, played drums all the way to eighth. But at Johnson, that's where I kind of got into uh, theater. Mm. And then, uh, I, I mean, I don't, no claim to her or whatever. I mean, to be honest, it's kind of the same level. I mean, but she had, he had a sister. And then I believe we were in the same, we were in the same grade. Harris Whittle's sister. Yeah, Stephanie. I know her from <clears throat> my work uh, in anime. She oh, wow. Voices. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so I knew her before him. Oh, okay. And Stephanie. She, and she actually told, oh, yeah, my brother's going to. Start mm-hmm. doing the stand up, like, oh, okay, I'll, look, I'll keep an eye out for him. He was very funny. He was good. I was, and went on to work on Parks and Rec. So, yeah, because I believe, so. um, Sarah, well, because I, I believe, I don't know what his background really was from uh, Johnston, or I believe he went to HSPVA, I'm guessing, Maybe. right? Well, whatever. So, after that, um, I, I know that, yeah, he was, that was his sister. And then, boom, Sarah Silverman, mm-hmm. I think, pointed him out yeah. and was like, yo, we need to get you. Up to, yeah, I guess, I, wherever. Got, I think she found him in L- L.A. when he was when he moved out there, and then she he went to work on her show. Yeah. And then from there, he got Parks and Rec. Yeah. And uh, then uh, yeah, did too much drugs. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. which sucks. Because yeah. then, I mean, um, me just even, like, watching his stand-up, yeah, man, he was, he was pretty... He was very funny. Yeah, he was, yeah. He was like... And what's funny is, or odd, I should say, he, he didn't start out funny. He was he would die. Wow. No pun intended. Sorry, no pun intended. He would. Yeah, yeah. He wouldn't do well. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's a euphemism. Yeah. He, he would <laughs> he would go on there and, and but he was kind of odd. Yeah. And a little different, and so he wasn't the standard you know set up punchline blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. So he had these different takes on stuff, and he just needed to find an audience, and mm-hmm. eventually he did. Yeah. And uh, once but once you, his first year he wasn't great, but mm-hmm. he fell into it and was very funny. He had some very he had great stuff. And then, then I, then I also I heard that there was something opened up here in Houston to dedicate to him. Or I don't know, but I, uh, I don't know if that ever know. happened. But I, I heard there was something afterwards. But you know, and I then, don't know. Maybe and, something I don't know. <clears throat> and then I do know that um, I guess his sister, you know, kind of still talks about and she yeah, has she has, she has a her pod- podcast. Yeah, she has, she has podcast a podcast too. about loss and that sort of thing, and yeah. she's doing very well with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The uh, one thing that Hicks started, Bill Hicks started out here, yeah. and famously, and there's been talk of a Bill Hicks statue to go up. Over off of Valley Parkway yeah. for uh, that'd be cool. Ten years, fifteen years, something yeah. like that. The guy who put it together, he lost his money. I don't know. He was involved in something and raised like fifty thousand. Apparently, half the statue was built, mm-hmm. and it's sitting there in whoever's workshop. Yeah. <laughs> so just it's like it's like all the way to the, above the waist, and then yeah, it just stops or so. some shit. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but, yeah, you know, that's one of my dad's <laughs> prized stories. Is, uh, <laughs> When he, uh, it it must have been the last stop, but uh, when he um, uh, smoked a cigarette outside with Bill Hicks. Oh, oh wow! Yeah, wow. Yeah, he still talks about that. 
But wow. yeah, yeah, that was a yeah, yeah, that was a big deal for him. Yeah. Was it's your dad like, into comedy? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, That's wow. how I like like I tell people all the time, like, I don't know if my dad was I mean, he was a good father, like as far as providing and, you know, making sure that I stayed out of trouble. But I don't know if he was I went to see Beverly Hills Cop one in nineteen eighty six in Los Angeles, California at my uh when we were out visiting. Uh with my parents. And Danny, you do the math. How old was I in 1986? Yeah, you were six years old. I was five. 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 <laughs> yeah, five. Well, I was six years old. You were five. Okay, yeah, yeah. so I was exposed <laughs> to all of that at that age. And I mean, I don't know if he knew. Six that year old him's running around. I ain't falling for no banana tail. I ain't falling for no banana tail. <laughs> 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 like in kindergarten, first grade. Yeah. I ain't falling for no banana yeah. tail. <laughs> well, my favorite one was like, do I look like Gerald Ford? Yeah. 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 He's like, all oh, y'all look like Gerald Ford. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. that was the one that was. And I remember thinking that was funny at that age. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, that's yeah. They say we all look alike. Yeah. So I, I don't know if my dad thought I was pre- knew uh, that I was precocious enough to handle that or what. Yeah. But I was exposed to all of that. And see, that's one of the reasons why every time, because uh, I, you know, girlfriend tell you, you're funny. You make me laugh so much. You yeah. should go on yeah. stage and all of that. I'm like, ah. But I know how hard, I, I have so much respect for it that I know how difficult mm-hmm. it is. And mm-hmm. I was told this years ago, one of the tricks to stand up is sound is being prepared but sounding conversational right like mm-hmm. this is just coming off the top of my head mm-hmm. and because that's what people do like the worst thing you can see like if you, the worst thing say a guy goes to see a comedy show mm-hmm. and on monday morning wants to tell the joke to his friends and it just dies oh right? yeah because it, it doesn't totally. have the setup it doesn't have the context <laughs> right variety of reasons and they sound like an idiot and yeah, yeah. man it, and it was oh man it was he did hilarious. this thing about uh, chickens and <laughs> oh dude the fucking thing and it's like yeah i don't get it i don't get you know? it no it's, man but you had to be there yeah, yeah, yeah you had to be there yeah. and he can't deliver it and right it's like some things and some that's things the it's trick delivery yeah that's the trick <laughs> learning how to do that yeah and how to coming yeah. up with the things and, and getting it on stage so it sounds conversational uh, but it's not right because you, know? you go back and you listen and you and you, like let's say prior or something yeah. like that right and you go back and you li- and if anybody else delivered some of that yeah. stuff it's nothing mm-hmm. but it's his inflection yeah it's just the it's, it's the every- history of what became before in the set yes so like the first one of the great things a guy taught me years ago in the first five minutes mm-hmm. let them know what your character is okay let uh-huh. them know what your worldview is yeah. however you get to that quickly. Because once that does, that the audience has a shorthand, mm-hmm. yeah. they know kind of what you're thinking about, where your worldview is, and the faster you get to that, the faster you can make jokes in that character. Right. And, awesome. And that's what every and every <coughs> great comic is a character, regardless of what you think about their act. Like if you you can take every great comic, you can whittle it down to five words what they are. Mm-hmm. You know, Jerry Seinfeld, neurotic Jewish New York guy. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Sam Kinison. Same set for ang- 30 years. Yeah. Sam yeah. Kinison, <laughs> angry, yeah. fat white guy. Yeah. Uh, you know, any take any comic. The great ones, uh, uh, Roddy Dangerfield. Mm-hmm. I can't get no respect. Right. You know, you know what joke, those... Joke, joke, yeah. joke, joke, joke. Like you his know thing what... to me is probably like one of the hardest... Like, yeah, like the, uh, like, the one liners. It's just joke, 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 yeah. joke. Like, how do you keep that up? Yeah, because my whole and I'm sorry to cut no, you off, but, but my whole thing. OK, so like when you mentioned Seinfeld and Seinfeld is able to still get away with the what's the deal with airline food. Yeah. And yeah, OK, I get how that was funny in 88. Mm-hmm. And it, he's well, like the Rolling Stones of uh, yeah. like nobody wants like we don't yeah. want to hear any new stuff. Yeah. Do this. He one. has a great line about yeah. that in his mm-hmm. own life and other comics who get to a point where they're very successful, they go, for the first 15 minutes, you can go out there and play with your dick, and you're going to get laughs. Right. Because people have paid 50 bucks, and they know who you are, and they know where you're coming, and they know what you are, and for 15 minutes, you can get away with bullshit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but after that, they're going, okay, well, now he's starting yeah. to suck. But the yeah, yeah, yeah. first 15 minutes, you can do the greatest hits package. Right. You can do the Rolling Stone set. Yeah. Yeah. And that's but that's part of going back to let them know what you're about. Let right. the, like Jeff Foxworthy, mm-hmm. redneck bullshit. Exactly. You know every great comic. Yeah. His boy. Here's your sign. Yeah. That one. Yeah. 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 Every yeah. great comic, and I tell that to new people. Co- hey, what should I do? Figure out what you are, and whittle that down to five words, and then mm-hmm. go up and be that. Mm-hmm. Right. And that will get you further faster than anything else. Right. 
Because a lot of people, they write jokes. Mm -hmm. Like, I wrote 10 new things. Okay, how does that fit into what your worldview is? What's your Mm -hmm. character? Right. Oh, I don't know. I thought this was funny. Okay, well, find your character. Mm -hmm. And it makes the writing easier. You're writing around that now. Now you're going, okay, that doesn't fit. I can maybe do something with it, put it in a different context, whatever. But it stays within the character. And everybody says... You know, it's a, you know, be yourself on stage. Fuck that. Yeah, Don't, no. Nobody cares about you. Nobody. You are not interesting. Right. Yeah, yeah. Be the uber you. Be yeah, the, yeah. the best that you can be. Be what you want to be mm-hmm. in life. Don't be your... No gives a fuck yeah, if yeah. that's you. You know? So it's pro wrestling. No, yeah. It's pro wrestling. It's yeah. a character. It's yeah. a, And no. you can make a heel turn right. you know, yeah, at some you point. Yeah, you yeah. know? Yeah, me fired up. You know? Yeah. But that's how you <laughs> figure out that character and then ride around it. And the other piece of advice I got... From a guy named Jimmy Pineapple, very funny guy, mm-hmm. still a great friend to this day. And he would say, take your one joke that you know works, mm-hmm. do it at the beginning of your open mic set, do it at the beginning, get that laugh, and then go back and write an extra tag for that joke. Mm-hmm. Write something that goes connects to that joke. Mm. Do that again to that joke. And in three weeks, that one joke is now six minutes long. Right. If you keep, you know that's funny. You know that that's, okay, that's a bullet I got in the house. It's going to be funny. Mm-hmm. Now, everything around it is going to be funny, too. Yeah. Because it's a tag to it. And once you get that five minutes, you put it aside, do it with another joke. Mm-hmm. Find Bam. another joke and do that. And next thing you know, you've got the back of an album. Look at any album, mm-hmm. comedy album. It's going to the store. Right. My mom. Yeah. Whatever. Those are all one <laughs> jokes. Yeah. That got built up exactly. and turned into a yes. bit. Yes. And so once you have that core, mm-hmm. once you have that the the nuclear reaction of mm-hmm. that joke, mm-hmm. you can put anything else in it. Yeah, which Hell is yeah. something that uh like and, and, and in the comedy like like everything's a special now. Like I think yeah. the comedy album yeah, um, it's that, gone away. It's, it's completely gone away. Like, mm-hmm. and, and, the, and there's no reason. Now it's Netflix. Yeah, it's ne- but, but it's, <laughs> yeah, and, it's an hour long <laughs> special. Yeah. yeah, and see, I think yeah. that messed it up because it has to be visual. So mm-hmm. what I see is I see a lot of guys now, who like, well, not just guys, but it's almost like you're too cool. Yeah, like, do, do, do you see that too? I, of the young. I'll tell you what I see. Trying to be cool. I see, and God bless them for it. Mm-hmm. Trying to reinvent. The genre. Okay. You'll right. see guys, the special of itself, like one guy did it with no audience. Mm-hmm. I forget who, he had no audience. Mm-hmm. It was an HBO special with no audience. So okay. it was trying to be a little avant garde. Right. And there's guys who do it like, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, I forget. He's from Houston. He does it. In, he did it in prison. And it was great. It was oh, funny. Yeah. Uh, Ali, Ali Sadiq. Ali Sadiq. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, and so great, there's people doing things that aren't necessarily comedy. Right. They're trying to. Reinv- reinvent the yeah. genre, for yeah. lack of a better term. Well, to yeah, me, yeah. Ali Sadiq yeah. kind of remind. He's more of like even almost just like an updated like Andy Griffin. Like he's yeah, he's a storyteller. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's a storyteller. Which is what yeah, I thought yeah. Charlie Murphy should have done because I saw yeah. Charlie Murphy yeah. and mm-hmm. like he, he, it was the epitome of that. The first fifteen minutes. Yeah, I saw Charlie Murphy at a black and an HBCU homecoming. Oh God! And he shit the bed. <laughs> and I hate to. I don't. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. But mm-hmm. I'm like, well, we came here for his. You know, I'm Rick yeah. James, bitch. Like we came yeah. here for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I heard and, somebody and, say he burned through his best stories on that show. On that show, and he now really he got did. nothing. He got, he I really gotta did. go do coke with more people. Fuck, exactly. Yeah. I got yeah. no, no stories. Shit. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 No, he got booed off stage. Yeah. Wow. Well, he he, he, he wasn't that. his brother. I mean, no, he's not. he wasn't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, his brother was skilled. Yeah, yeah. His brother was amazing. Yeah. Like, and 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 then even he got burnt out. I guess. Yeah. I mean, he quit. Yeah. Making family movies. Yeah. You're getting thirty million bucks was too much. Yeah. Hey, you're making family movies mm-hmm. now. You got well, he's got what, fourteen kids? Jeez. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So uh <laughs> that last movie was shit though. So for example, we had uh I don't know if you heard of Marlo Ray. He's uh mm-hmm. well, anyway, he does Secret Group. I had him on here. Yeah. And perfect perfect example. I say Eddie Murphy. And then I think how it came about was me just asking, Hey, you know, I mean, I don't know, what would be your favorite, you sure. know, back in the day? And then he said when I said Eddie Murphy, he thought of Eddie Murphy actor. Yeah, he didn't think like of 30. Eddie Murphy. Yeah, because he's like thirty. Yeah, he didn't yeah. think of Eddie Murphy as the comedian, like like him and I, like 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 my, my dad and my mom. Those were, first two yeah. specials of his are 
Mount Rushmore. They can't be touched. Yeah, yeah. it's even though so they good. have each of them has material <clears throat> that would get you. Yeah, yeah. Out. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that would you but, couldn't do it today. But, but Bernie the, Mac. Bernie Mac couldn't Bernie, go because Bernie Mac yeah. had a lot of kind of homophobic stuff. But, but it was funny. Though. But then again, I mean, who was behind uh, Eddie Murphy? Keenan Ivory Wayans too. Yeah. yeah, yeah and then not yeah. knowing, I didn't know that and until I got him, older. You know, before him it was Red Fox, and it was yeah. you know. Uh, uh, Richard Pryor, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, mm-hmm. and yeah. Red Fox's albums, man, those things still kill. Yeah, they, they <laughs> those do. things they do. are fire. They do. They're still, and it's dirty as fuck. It's dirty and it's racist. All dirty. And it's, yeah, yeah, it is funny as hell. You yeah. get one of those old vinyls. No, no, no. And but but yeah. you know you can get them online. And, yeah. And, and like I said, the man I was raised by was insane and, and yeah. let me hear because, but, and and that's one of the reasons why I thought about it. But like never did it, um, because one of my favorite people and my dad had his records was uh, Franklin Ajay. Okay, you yeah, know Franklin oh, yeah. Ajay, right? He's one of my like when I mm-hmm. when people who's one of your he's in my top ten, easy. Yeah, um, and mm. um, uh, the Wayans, because uh, people don't understand how funny those guys really were. Mm-hmm. Um, they see they knew in Living Color. And then they see, you know, a, a, everybody had to get the, their sitcom because that's how yeah. you get your pay. The Wayans were a mafia out there in L.A. They, yeah, they, they just they ran were, the comedy store. Right? Yeah, yeah. But, but just see, when you go through like a Franklin Ajay record mm-hmm. or, or like one of those records, mm-hmm. and like you said, it builds upon, it builds upon. Like it's all, everything's almost like a concept yeah. album. It's not just random jokes. Yeah. And something might not get a laugh, but it'll call back to it mm-hmm. later. And you're like, oh, that's where he was going with it. Yeah. You know? Sometimes you can spend 20 minutes... Paying off a joke you did 30 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? And when somebody does that, when I see that happen, I'm like, okay. Yeah. That's that's the talent. That's the gift. Mm-hmm. When you can tie all that stuff together and work. Oh, yeah. that's. And I know several guys, like Andy Huggins here in town is one of the best at it. And nobody builds a set better than him. Right. Yeah. Classic stuff. Yeah. Yeah. He's still at it. He's still at it. He's still at it. Yeah. And then I, I think I did catch him when was that? Special on I don't know who's funny or last last man oh, or what uh, was it? The, it was America's Got Talent. There you go. Yeah, he got on that. Yeah. So, but he but, also released a special and it's doing okay, pretty yeah. good. It's on Amazon Prime, I believe. Wow. Um, I mean, I got a special on Amazon Prime, so it's not great. <laughs> it's well, not hard to get on there. Well, when did it, uh, when did it come out? Oh, it was ten years ago when I did oh, the wow. Whiskey Brothers. Maybe nah, oh, eight, Whiskey eight, Brothers. That's our yeah. boy. That's Sam. Was yeah. Him, yeah, 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 Sam. yeah, yeah. You know Sam. Yeah. yeah, yeah. See, we went to high school with Sam. Yeah. Okay, I see. all right. And yeah. see, that, I think that was another time where I went up, and then Sam was there, and then we were all there like young comics, yeah. and all of a sudden we just got bumped, like yeah. literally. And I was like, "Fuck, man." Yeah. Well, he's <laughs> even, even. Yeah, no, no. But I mean, that. No, and, no, and, no, and, I'm saying, oh yeah, he's one of those guys that, like, when I found out he was doing, I was like, "Oh, oh okay, that's like the only thing he could do." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because yeah. that kid, like a, a class clown, yeah. like oh yeah, yeah, back at yeah. <laughs> he's I mean, not going to be able to work for anyone. Yeah, <laughs> ever. Yeah, actually, that might have been. That might have been the other time I did not open mic, and maybe you were there because yeah. I know Sam was there, and it was like a bunch of guys. It was man, this is like mm-hmm. right when I got. I don't even know how long ago this was, but um, all I know, Sam was there, and then we got all mm-hmm. bumped. We were all there, oh sure, and we got bumped, and then it was like I bumped a guy once. Uh, I came into the Laugh Stop open mic. This is probably 2003. You know, I'm in the business 10 years, whatever. And I just go up and back then, you know, you drew the names out of the hat and mm-hmm. that was the order. Unless the pros walked in, the pros went, okay, I want to go there. Right. Yeah. You just bump those kids. Oh, you were here. Yeah. No, whatever. Okay. So I go in and I'm signing the thing and I bump this guy. He goes, hey, man, uh, what are you doing? It's like, I'm, I'm going on. He's like, hey, I, that's me. You're bumping me? I was like, yeah. He goes, man, I got here at, at like fucking five o'clock. I go, oh, so? really? You got here at five? I got here in 1993. Yeah. <laughs> so I beat you here. Yeah. So I'm going to take your yeah, spot. That's all right, fuck with. And now I'm going to go long. Because yeah. to teach him, yeah. But see, so. but, but like, okay. And, 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 and real quick. I hate to shit on all the young people, but <clears throat> just just the, um, you know, the gen, I guess it's Gen Z, but that generation yeah. that, um, uh, like what we've been talking about, sort of the history of it. Mm-hmm. So many of these kids are just anti-history on everything. Yeah. You know, like I also referee basketball, and yeah. the kids like their shorts short now. Oh, yeah. Right? So we had a rule a couple of years ago where you couldn't roll them up, which yeah. is which I was <laughs> totally for because you, the inseam wasn't enough. Ah, so you're okay. trying to administer a free throw, and yeah. this is 
16 year old and his balls are on one yeah. side and his dick's on the other because the insane is yeah. splitting him right down. They're the the, they're, they're like John Havlicek or whatever. Right, not, right, yeah. right. Well, no, John Havlicek's yeah. shorts were cut to be short. Oh, so well. the inseam was long. Okay. These are being rolled up. I see. So okay. the inseam's coming up here. And uh, so there was a rule that they couldn't roll their shorts up anymore. For some reason, the school district wasn't sure. uh, ordering the right size shorts that the kids want. Anyway, so I, I go to him and I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry, guys. You got to wear it Fab Five style now. That. And the coach was like. What? Yeah. So the coach was like, ref, they have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like you want to play basketball, right? But you don't even know the history <laughs> of it. You yeah. Know? And that was kind of the appalling. I'm like, How's, I mean, God yeah. bless him, but how's this guy not heard of Eddie Murphy? Knew Eddie Murphy yeah. was a comic. Yeah. Well, that's, that's all people man. don't know. Yeah. And some people don't want to know. I mean, but they, you have so much access. Like, yeah. History, Nowadays, sure. History is right sure. at the tip. Like, you, you can go you got, and you can research You've got your the art. Library of Congress right here. Yes. I, yeah. I had to tell my, my nephew flunked off the football team one year, right? Mm -hmm. And he flunked off because he flunked history. That, and I'm like, how the fuck do you flunk out? How, how do you flunk history with fucking Google? Yeah, like you get an eighty-five with Wikipedia. Yeah, yeah. you know, right? Yeah, you know, you know what I mean? Like how? Like okay, maybe you fuck up the test, but all your homework should be a hundred. Yeah, like how do you? And he looked at me like, like I, like I was Daniel giving him the gospel. Like, I, I, what the mm -hmm. fuck are you talking about? Like, I don't, uh, I don't understand how people. I mean, I get it. When you're young, you don't think anything. In Ten years older than you. Mm -hmm. Means anything, mm -hmm. and so, but the I find people the comics or whoever, and the older they get, the more they get into the history, mm -hmm. you know. But again, I don't give a fuck about kids. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. <coughs> they go off and do their thing. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully I mean, they'll come back. Mm -hmm. I can say it. I mean, definitely going. Like I said, the whole. Uh, I'm sorry, maybe want me to pour it for you? You good? Uh, so just going through this whole. Trying to go back up, do it, which is, I, I mean, I think you're just confirming it right now. Like me, that's why I started this, you know, because like I said, nowadays, it's just a pain in the butt to get down there. Nowadays, yeah. it's, it's like, and don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm willing to do the time. I'm willing to do the time. But then again, I guess, you know, now I got more responsibilities. Sure. I got X amount of other things. The older and, you get, you can't be up at 1.30 in the morning mm -hmm. going up in front of six people, mm -hmm. you know. Especially um, if you got a job. Like you got to go all in, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so, then, yeah. Yeah. And you have to go all in. And then most of those guys now are going on. And it's, like I said, much respect to them. But then, like I said, it's just, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's all I mean, even now, I mean, I did it for 25 years. Mm -hmm. And right now, if you told me I had to go do an open mic at one in the morning, well, oh, fuck yourself. No. Yeah. <laughs> I like to sleep. Yeah, exactly. I don't want to yeah, go sit there and talk uh, to idiots. Yeah, yeah. I can be yeah. funny. And who's know, there at right. one in the morning that, I, that gives a shit about me? Yeah, a bunch of drunk yeah. people. Yeah. yeah. And then lately, I, I've been going up, man. Lately, it's been like midnight, like 1230. Um, I think oh. I got... I, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so so I I've kind of laid off the last two weeks or yeah, week. Yeah, what the three thirty in the morning show was booked. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't do the the buffet, the morning buffet show. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, there's a it's it's a weird time. I mean, it's not weird. It's just different. Uh, there are ways like this to get out there and do stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, that wasn't available. 20 years ago, 15 mm -hmm. years ago anyway. Right, mm -hmm. right. Uh, now you can get your message out and you can get, you'll find a fan base way easy. It, there's a lot of noise to cut through because everybody's got one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. No, right, right. So cutting through the noise is an issue. <clears throat> but if you can, this is a lot easier than banging around one-nighters through Alabama, mm -hmm. you know, for a hundred bucks right. trying to find an audience. Right. Um, which I would prefer. This. Yes, <laughs> yes, because... Um, and, and, and it's like that with everything. Is it? It's like, do you know how? I mean, just how difficult was it? Just even twenty years ago, but I mean, ten years ago even, mm -hmm. to get on a screen, yeah, and just in front of people, and in, and have access to everyone. It was almost impossible. Now you got the world. Now the yeah. whole people in Bangladesh. Yes, like even like <laughs> yeah. like this thing, like you said, this thing yeah. can get huge in Bangladesh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, oh yeah. When we did the Whiskey Brothers podcast, yeah. we had done it for about ten years, and we started early when there weren't a lot of podcasts, mm -hmm. and we got numbers quickly. Uh, we became in this small town in Ireland. Right. We were a thing. Yeah. Like these different pubs wow. would play well, they our saw show. Whiskey. And yeah, we're like, let's click on this. Yeah, and so they would listen to these <laughs> stupid Texans in Ireland, right. and we would get <laughs> messages from them like, "Oh, we all right, mate. Yeah, every day we're listening to you." Yeah. 
like this is fucking weird. You know, yeah, no, no way. Is. Ten, twenty years ago, I would ever reach. You would them. have ever had. I mean, it was yeah. impossible to get on a screen in front yeah. of people. So, do you think that kind of? Wa- I mean, it's harder to weed out, um, just a- 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 and sift through like uh, the mm-hmm. nonsense because because sure. I did this with like um, you know I had friends you know back in the late nineties that wanted to rap. Yeah. Right. And a lot of them were not talented. Some of them were. <laughs> Some of them were. Sure. Yeah. But the thing is, you had to get studio time. You had to Nothing press rhymes CDs. with orange. <laughs> exactly. Damn it. Right? But you had to press CDs. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you had to sell uh, them out of the back of the car. Sell them out of the back of the car. Like you had to have a street team. You had to get a good. Yeah. Pro- you had to get a good producer. But now. Yeah. I mean, like. You do it on your phone. Yeah. Like Soldier Boy yeah. ruined that whole thing. So now you have people that are yeah. terrible. Yeah. Just shoot. There's a lot of noise. I think what's weird about the industry, we were, I was talking with a company about doing something a while back, and there was a local TV station Mm -hmm. that was interested, kind of. Mm -hmm. And so, what the weird thing happened was that the guy said, okay, let's do it on YouTube first and then see what happens. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, we shot a couple of things, but then the TV station, it never went anywhere, Mm -hmm. but the TV station took it. My point is this. Even in this day and age, when it's easier and you can reach more people Mm -hmm. on YouTube, we could have reached 100 million people on Mm -hmm. YouTube. On a local TV station, you got maybe 100,000. Right. YouTube, all that number. The minute a TV station took an interest, the YouTube numbers went up. Yes. Because it was this illusion that, okay, TV has this sort of gatekeeper thing. It had to go through committees. Oh, yeah. Somebody had to sign off yeah. on this. Any asshole can get on YouTube. Yeah. But when it had that air of acceptability by the normals, right. whatever, mm-hmm. that's when it got more hit. And I found that, and it's still like that. Mm-hmm. That's what I find so fascinating. Right, right, That there's right. so much bigger reach on YouTube than anything on Channel 11 ABC right, affiliate. Right. And, but the money's still there. Like the money's the ad- not the money's not there. But but I'm saying the advertisers still throw the money. Yeah, there, that's what right? they, they think. Yeah. That okay, oh well this was on somebody in a suit right. had to approve this. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not four assholes sitting in a room <laughs> making videos. Right, right. You know? And that's what I find really weird that that's still a thing. It really is, yeah. yeah. But well, I mean, I, I I agree, and then also on top of that, I feel I mean that's what got me started on this. It's like don't get me wrong. Even I have family members like, so what are you doing that for? Well, I'm doing yeah. it to do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, and then even episode, I'll say, go back to that, like younger episode, my other episodes, they pretty much suck sometimes, mm-hmm. I have to say. Yeah. But at the same time, it ain't going to happen overnight, you know? Right. You get your feet wet and yeah. start doing it and, then, and you figure and then, it out. And... You know, fucking from the plugging this, that, yeah. well, yet the other. But then again, I, I've I've heard it. And I'm not gonna lie, like, like I, I, I still go into my spiel. I'm still gonna do this no matter what. Sure. I'm, I might be like 65 years old. I'm still gonna be fucking doing right. it yeah, no like, matter what. Uh, you know, so, somebody told somebody very close to me told me, okay, well, you go over there because you and Danny are just playing anyway. I'm like, <laughs> so what? <laughs> I'm like, okay, I, I could whittle oh, yeah. wood. You know, I yeah, could, I could uh, do anything. I could spend 1,500 bucks on golf clubs and, and, and go shit the bed yeah. at golf. I was terrible. I, I could never break 100 at that. So fuck that. <laughs> Yeah. I got sick of that shit. So, right. like, what do you want me to do? Yeah, uh, why can't I go play with Danny? Yeah, <laughs> but 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 I mean, there. I think the whole life lesson. I mean, I'm sure you know now. I mean, um, even like you know. I mean, we all. I mean, what's yours is yours. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. your material. Yeah. Whatever. This is mine. So mm-hmm. yeah. If they're gonna come knocking, which whatever, they're gonna knock sure. and they're gonna ask me. They're not. It's not gonna be other way where I'm. Begging like, yeah. hey, please come, come, come. Right. Because that's how I feel. I mean, obviously, you know, I mean, I mean, man, I mean, even if I get five laughs now, oh, dude, that that makes me feel like I'm in a fucking arena. Yeah. And sure. that makes me just like, like, right. it, I mean, like you said, I hit strangers. I start off with some whatever, mm-hmm. and it kind of gets to the glimpse like, oh, this guy, whatever. And then I just lay it, and then as boom. long as you're having fun, yeah, right, you know, and there's a, <clears throat> I've seen people who have a plan. Mm-hmm. And, yes. they, and they exactly. want to go, okay, I'm going to do this up. I'm uh-huh. not going to blah, blah, blah. And then I'm going to make blah, blah, yeah. whatever. And sometimes it'll work, whatever. It's, but if 
if you just want to have fun, uh-huh. there's a lot worse ways to do it. There's a yeah, and a lot right. more dangerous ways yeah. to do it. What are you going to jump out of a fucking plane? No, you come here and you <laughs> bullshit and exactly. have fun. Yeah, and then I'm, yeah, I'm back home like in an hour and a half. And that's what people like when I first oh well you're making it. No, I'm not making any fucking money at it. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> but I'm having fun. I'm getting laid. Right, exactly. <laughs> the fuck? Yeah, there you go. What's if you more paid me in pussy, yeah, I would fucking do the gig. Than that. You know, exactly. and that's one of my be- my best friends. Man, if they paid you in pussy, you would never <laughs> hold a job. Job ever never. again? Like, why would you? Blonde, why would I? Why would you? That's why you <laughs> yeah. have a job. Yeah, you pay for a pussy. <laughs> pay for a pussy. That's so I'm saying. cutting out the middleman. Right. I'm not getting the government involved in the taxes. <laughs> exactly. But see, you know? and, 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 and that's one good thing the digital thing has because, um, you know, and, and, and it's the whole, like nobody read Moby Dick when it first came out. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Dude was dead by the time it became mm-hmm. a classic. But still, you. I mean, you know, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm sure it was yeah. a terrible drunken death yeah. that he <laughs> suffered, but. His <laughs> Herman Melville's name lives on. So yeah. I don't know, man. Just throw some shit up against the wall, see what happens. Like, you know, maybe twenty years from now somebody finds this. Oh, that was fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Like, the internet never guys. kills anything. No. Or they might just yeah. make fun of us, but shit, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's getting hurt. <laughs> no fuck. Getting hurt. Well, the way the way I I mean, even I laid it in my stand up is like I, I got I used to get in a lot of trouble, drunk, whatever, this and that, and the past and then now I'm sober. And y'all get mad when I say this or that. So I go, I'm confused. Like, this world is very confusing because y'all like me. Y'all don't like me this way. But then when I get sober and I'm straight and I'm trying to be who I am Mm -hmm. and to speak about it on a microphone, then y'all get pissed off on Mm -hmm. that, too. Like, (laughs) it gets confusing. And and then some of them. Audiences are a necessary evil. Yeah. Who gives it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. They have to be there. Right. In order for you to do your thing. Right. You know, that's the thing when people don't get. Comedy stand up is so different from like music. You can sit here and practice a song by yourself yeah. for a month. Right. Yeah. But with comedy, if you write, you have to practice it in front of an audience. Right. Yeah. Right. Without an audience, yes, you don't exactly. know. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so that's what I get mad when you see people recording sets. I'm like, yeah. man, that's not finished yet. That's right. That's mm-hmm. the second time I did it. Don't right. fucking. Well, that's why they take your phones at some of these. Yeah. Places. Yeah. Rightfully so. I mean, though. See, like Chris Rock or somebody trying yeah. out new material. Yeah, Chris Rock took my phone in Tulsa. Yeah, yeah. did he? Yeah. <laughs> you can't. Not him, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can't do that. You can't. You have to have an audience. Uh-huh. And if it's not ready and some jack off records yeah. you, oh, that bit's not ready. It's not done. But, yeah, well, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, that's the difference. It, it's, you can't do it unless you have an audience and they're a necessary evil. Right, right. And they're rarely correct. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but see, then it just, it's just a tiring. It is tiring to get. Down I got there. sick of my act because I got tired of doing gigs where I didn't like the audience mm-hmm. and I didn't like what they laughed at. Mm-hmm. Right. It's like I want to do something different. I don't. Eh, it's just, eh, ugh. But you did you ever uh, take trips? Uh, I mean, yeah. Did you ever do out of town? Oh, I've uh, toured gigs? everywhere. Yeah, yeah. But all I mean, over the country. But so how are the crowds different in different regions? Not much. Okay. I mean, this is still America. Right. Yeah. Every town's got a Pizza Hut. Every uh-huh. town's got a fucking. Their road sucks. Yeah. yeah. They all hate their mayor. Their yeah. cops, you know. Yeah. So there's, it's not much different. Okay. Um, the only thing I would, I would kind of, if I was like in Slidell, Louisiana, mm-hmm. that's for instance. <laughs> yeah. And it's a specific story in Slidell. Mm-hmm. I get up and uh, this guy, he's the owner, and he goes, all right, listen, ah. We don't want to hear a lot of jokes about fucking. We don't want to hear about <laughs> fucking dicks and pussies. So get up there. We're kind of a family place. Okay. And so if you could just not do that. Yeah. And we're like, well, there goes my first 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Whatever. And now I'll go up and warm them up. Then I'll bring you up. And he goes up on stage and... All right, so welcome, everybody. So, yeah, we're, you know what? Here's one for you. Uh, these three N-words. <laughs> and he didn't say N-word. Yeah. And I went, what? <laughs> and said it four more times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, so pussy's out. Yeah, pussy's <laughs> out. But yeah. that's in. Yeah. And come to find out, that's where the clan had meetings in that town. Oh, they had a little wow. sign. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, yeah, they were... That was nothing to them. That yeah, was just yeah. a, that was a comma. Yeah, you know, yeah. The, wow. And so, exactly. Yeah. And so I'm like, okay, it's the family value. And I got stared at uh-huh. for one of my. It was kind of on the liberals. I don't even remember. 
But it was like, ah, oh, these fucking liberals. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have opened with the N word. <laughs> yeah, I should've. that would have got you on my side, <laughs> right? Yeah. Fucking crackers. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, yeah, that's cheap heat. Though, and so yeah. you get that kind of thing, depending yeah. on the town, right? And but everything's the same. People are people. And it's you know, I mean, I had to do a show with a Mormon, and mm-hmm. I am far from that. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> and I had to share the condo with him. That's another story. <laughs> but so half the crowd was Mormon, yeah. and the other half were normal people. Yeah. And so he was like, hey, you know, you did that joke about, uh, he was dropping the F word a bunch. I got a lot of my people here. Could you? I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, right. So the next night, so this fucking thing happened to me the other fucking day. Right. I'll tell you, you know what I'm fucking talking about, don't you, fucking <laughs> Sister Mary? Whatever the fuck your name yeah, is. Elder fucking Yeah, Thomas. Elder Elder fuckwit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, like, don't tell me I can't do something. Right. Yeah. That happened to me with fucking Jimmy Walker. Really? In El Paso. Really? In El Paso. I saw Jimmy Walker in like, Vegas. Like, he opened, my! Yeah, like, he like, opened for George Wallace. Yeah. yeah I saw Jimmy Walker. Really? I opened for him, uh-huh. and he kept cutting my... Because I was killing him. Yeah. I was killing him. Oh, I was yeah. fucking rocking the room, yeah. and he's up there with that 30, 40-year-old dynamite bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so he kept telling the owner, hey, man, cut Mungle's time. Cut yeah. Mungle's time. Damn. I went from 20 minutes as a feature down to seven, mm-hmm. right, on the last day. And I'm like, this motherfucker... I'm like, still getting paid, right? Okay, fine. Do my seven minutes up. And this is when the woman who played the wife on the Jeffersons, the actress. Okay. Uh, Forget her actor, uh, her name. Yeah, what's her real name? But she died. Uh, Wheezy. Uh Wheezy. She had died Uh that week. And so on the last night, I go, hey, man, uh, Mr. Walker, I'm, I'm sorry to hear about Wheezy Jefferson, the actress. I'm sure you were close. And he goes, Motherfucker, that was a different show. <laughs> and I knew full well. I went, oh! Dynamite, man. <laughs> Dynamite. He goes, fuck you. I was like, yeah, fuck me. <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> I didn't go back to that club. Because yeah. when you were telling this story right now, it came in the mind. I go, hell yeah. Like when you go, yeah, well, she had died. What I meant was like, you're already brainstorming in your head. Like, yeah. like, like, like you know, I'm going to put, I'm gonna well, put something together. It was a perfect together. storm that she yeah. just died. Like, it was like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was perfect. Yeah. Yeah. It could have been any black person. <laughs> <laughs> I would have yeah. found yeah. a way to yeah. fuck with this yeah. guy. Anybody that was on a Norman Lear show <laughs> yeah. in the late 70s. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, weren't you the maid in two episodes <laughs> yeah. right. of All in the Family? Right, exactly. Some shit. Yeah. That girl, I bet you were close. And yeah, Norman Lear just died. Yeah. Yeah, I drive thought he by. died 10 years ago. He yeah. drive by, right? Drive by. <laughs> drive by. Yeah. Wait, who? Never could get out Norman of Lear. Norman Lear. He created All in the Family. The guy who created every show. Every show. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Maud. Yeah. Maud, yeah. Uh, he all handled Jefferson, all the... Jefferson. He was handling all, all the, the, mm-hmm. the, the very untouchable issues during the 80s, yeah. you would say. Yeah. That he tackled... Uh, yeah. Well, you know, you very know. special episodes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Which, which I, I would say, yeah. I mean, I, I would say that was kind of cool, I mean, for the I time. Mean, in a way. I mean, but you want to well, laugh, and then you got to see Arnold get him molested. You yeah. Know? You don't really want that. You know, that's yeah, crazy. Yeah, it's all in the family and yeah, fucking s- the somebody wife. Somebody wants JJ to join a gang. Like, stop, yeah. I want to laugh. That right. guy kind of reminded me of, like, my dad just, like, kind of always being what mad, you know, in a way. My favorite very special <laughs> episode was, God, what was the show? With Rerun. Oh, uh, What's Happening. What's Happening. Uh-huh. <laughs> 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 the very special episode was the show... How bad it and wrong it is to bootleg concerts. I remember that. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, and he was rerun the concert. Rerun book, book, bootlegs. A fucking Eagles concert. An Eagles concert. The, the yeah. one black guy on yeah. America right. who goes to watch the Eagles. Eagles yeah. And he's dancing his, his fucking rerun, and his stupid fucking tape recorder, recorder falls out. Yeah. And the, the, oh, the Eagles like, hey. Yeah. Black guy yeah, yeah. who's recording. Yeah. This is wrong. He's got this giant fucking I know, recorder. Like, you how could, could you even secretly it up? How yeah. could you even secretly record anything in the seventies? Yeah. He had that big giant mm-hmm. coat. It's big like, reel to reel. Yeah, he's got pocket. like a reel to reel <laughs> fucking recording to get the Eagles. Yeah. And all his black friends are there at the Eagles. Like, I yeah. didn't know. Like, yeah. this, I was a kid. Like, there's no way. There's no way. Like, Why isn't he going to the Jackson 5? They or couldn't so, get Sly Stone. <laughs> yeah, couldn't. Yeah. <laughs> but they got the fuck. They got the Eagles, yeah. <laughs> there was some sort of tie in with Glenn CBS Fry is giving yeah. rerun shit mm-hmm. about his fucking bootleg. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my fellow alumnus, Don Henley. Yeah, University Don Henley. North Texas. 
Todd Henley. What, what, what year was that? Probably episode shown. Oh in God, the late seventies, man. Yeah. Probably seventy six uh, or something like that. Man, yeah. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I saw it as a kid. I was like, this is the dumbest fucking. Thing. <laughs> yeah, it was ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, kids, don't bootleg. Yeah, and then the they fuck- would have the PSA after <laughs> yeah. where Raj is like, hey man, bootlegging is like. Uh, oh God. A bad thing. So yeah. if you see someone bootlegging a concert, point him out. When you pay twelve dollars to see Van Halen, <laughs> twelve dollars, yeah. Don't take in a recorder <laughs> and sell it for fifty cents. Yeah, exactly. You're taking away all the money. Right. And how, from the how, Eagles. Yeah. And and he was doing the rerun dance to what? Which Yeah, song? to what Eagles song? <laughs> Which song You know, it may have been the Doobie Brothers. I may be wrong about that. You know what? You know what? I think it was, I think the, it Doobie was the Doobie Brothers. Brothers. No, it was the Doobie Brothers. Yeah. It was the Doobie Brothers. You're right. You're yeah. right. I, I remember now. Oh, it wasn't the Eagles, it was the Doobie Brothers. I knew it was it one of those was. fucking oh, uh-huh. garbage. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. again. So Michael but, McDonald is like, hey man, what's wrong with you? I'm gonna be there. Reruns dancing. I'm gonna be there. What the fuck? Rerun. Yeah. Why the fucking... Oh, that's why the black guy... It was the Doobie Brothers. Right. Was, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, why yeah, they're yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, That was yeah. Blue-Eyed Soul. Mm-hmm. That was something that was acceptable, yeah. Yeah, so I you, guess. You can, yeah. God damn. Mm-hmm. Shit, I've got to go. <laughs> oh, you do? I do, seriously. Uh, yeah. Okay. I, didn't, I just realized what time it was. Nah, man, you're getting out oh. in the mix. You're getting into it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Getting, getting, getting. I mean, dude, you're more than welcome to come back. Yeah, hopefully. Oh, more than, I, 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 want to, I want to bring you back because, like I said, man, like like... Yeah, you're like man. You, you made my day, yeah. and yeah. then also I wanted to say, Robert, before you go, man. The, I mean, yeah, dude, you just confirmed. Like, I guess I'm doing right. And yeah, we're, and we're doing right, bro. We can't talk about I what's mean, happening with yeah. any other guests we've had. Yeah, because Danny <laughs> keeps bringing in these 26 year olds. Yeah, who know nothing about nothing. Yeah, they can talk about TGI Friday or what TGIF. No, uh, they yeah. can't even talk about that. Uh, Eddie yeah. Murphy, uh, he's yeah. an Eddie actor. Bur- that's amazing, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. dude. You're a comic. <laughs> yeah, a black comic. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> but nah, man. Yeah. Like you're more than welcome. Appreciate uh, it. Yeah, I, I'm. You know where it's at now. So cool. definitely, I would love to have you back. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Absolutely. And then we yeah. can go have it definitely in a we'll part talk about two. about anime next time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please yeah. do. Please yeah. do. Please yeah. do. I'll bring my son. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. You can sign his manga. So, <laughs> but, but yeah. So I guess we'll go ahead and call it. But yeah, Robert, thank you for coming. Thanks for having yeah. me. Till next time, bro. All right, man. Thank All you. Right, see you later. All right. Yeah, I gotta get back to that.